Patricia and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about scanning electron microscopy. Scanning electron microscopy allows us to use electrons to take images of samples at very high magnification and also very high resolution. That means we can see finer and finer details in the samples that we're looking at. This is a scanning electron microscope. A beam of electrons is produced here and travels down through the column where it can interact with the samples which are inside the chamber here. Samples that we scan in a scanning electron microscope must be dry and they need to be conductive. Biological samples are fixed and dried in a special way so that they maintain the shape and size that they have in real life. To make samples conductive, we add a very thin layer of metal, such as gold or platinum, over the surface. Samples are loaded into the microscope, the door is closed and we pump it down to a vacuum. When the chamber has reached the correct vacuum level, we can switch on the electron beam and begin to, begin to scan the surface of the sample. We can adjust the magnification, the brightness and the contrast of the image, and change the focus. The sample that we're looking at today is a bee's leg. The scale bar here allows us to see the size of the sample. Increasing the magnification, we can see more detail in the surface of the sample and we begin to see that this area is made up of lots of small particles. These particles are pollen grains. The scale bar here shows us the size. The surface detail of the pollen grains allows us to tell what species the pollen has come from. As well as biological studies, scanning electron microscopy is used in forensic studies in geology and in the measurement of nanoparticles. The images that we have seen here, while they have amazing surface detail, are still technically two-dimensional images.